99 years ago in this very spot, two trams collided, charged with detonators. They exploded. You might wonder why. On the morning of April 25th, 1915, troops mainly from Australia and New Zealand landed near Garba Tepe, at a location soon to be known as Anzac Cove. I don't think any of them had the faintest idea of how terrible it was going to be. I was well aware of the fact that my mother and my father would never talk about the First World War. The Turks knew a landing was coming. The element of surprise had been lost weeks before. The 10th Battalion scouts were among the first to reach the top of the cliff face. The scouts, using old trench lines, went like hell for Gunridge. It was something terrible to see and hear different chaps near me, one by one, getting hit and without being able to give them adequate assistance. Chaps I had been talking with a minute or two previously were dead. Nearly all his mates were killed on the first day. Mothers, wives, lovers, sweethearts, children had no idea what was happening to their men. As news of the losses incurred at Gallipoli reached home, Australians sought ways to raise funds and care for the wounded and ways to honour the dead. They wanted a major patriotic display to show that the union movement were heavily behind the war effort. Australia and New Zealand's first Anzac Day was held in Adelaide on the 13th of October 1915, replacing the traditional eight-hour day holiday. The star attraction of the carnival was the tramway smash. This was highly popular and seen as the highlight of the day. The whole point of it was to raise money. The real Anzac days, if I could put it that way, uh, began by a spontaneous combustion. And that celebration focused much more on commemorating the landing, commemorating the dead, whereas the Eight Hours Day celebration was on fundraising and recruiting for the AIF. The 10th Battalion losses were absolutely extraordinary. But something great and ghastly and profound and defining had been born. A legend had been forged and it sustains Anzac. On the morning of the Anzac landing, Private Arthur Blackburn and Lance Corporal Philip Robin reached their unit's objective. Scrubby Knoll on the third ridge. From here they could see the water of the Dardanelle Straits. Later that day, Lieutenant Colonel Mustafa Kemal, commander of the 19th Turkish Division, established his headquarters on this same knoll. No Allied soldier would set foot there again during the entire campaign. Even though it's, it's become a symbol of our idea of national identity and New Zealanders idea of national identity, we must still remember that there were other people there. During the early days of the war, the 10th Battalion earned an unofficial name, one that would stay with it throughout the war and beyond the Fighting 10th. As far as I'm concerned, it had to be done and we did it. You can't say that those men that died overseas are myths and legends. They are real people. Their blood and bones were left at Gallipoli. 